Well, hello and welcome to another e-learning day. I wanted to bring you more of a quote unquote live lecture just because I think it gets to be kind of tough just following directions without a lot of guidance. So you get a lecture that I do exactly the same way when we're in school. So I just thought I'd record it to you um, from the comforts of my kitchen counter. So you've been doing a lot of looking at checking accounts, um, being the article that you analyzed, or of course on Tuesday you did a comparative look at different banks and how their checking accounts are similar and different. So when I go through sections of um, the units leading up to Pattysville, I typically do some kind of lecture like this. So I feel like we did it a bit backwards, but nonetheless, that's okay. I also typically have students take notes during lecture. Don't feel like you have to do that. What I'd encourage you for today's activity is have this up um, and along with the Google form that I sent you. Pause every now and then um, because for this activity you're going to be writing quiz questions with the answers um, as if you were giving your students a quiz. So as I lecture on um, banking checks and debit cards, pause from time to time, go over to your Google form, turn one of the points that I talk about into a question and then answer your own question and I believe you have to do 10. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, there's really, you know, a lot of different kinds of bank accounts. You probably ran into some of those on Tuesday's activity, but the very basic bank accounts is you could have a savings account or a checking account. So let me back into savings accounts. Typically people have savings accounts, you know, or, you know I even think of my own kids have savings accounts. Um, you'll, you'll have a place to go put your money uh, for safekeeping. Um, the cool part about a savings account, although it's small, it can earn a little bit of interest, so your money will make more money. Um, check in, savings accounts, excuse me, tend to be very, 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 very low interest, but still um, think of it like free money. Uh, typically, as uh, kids become young adults, kind of the rite of passage is when you get your first job, that seems to parallel when you get your first checking account simply because, and we'll talk about this in a bit, um, a lot of businesses now have what are called automatic deposits. So they'll require you to have a bank account to put them into. And so the cool part about checking accounts is you can write checks against them or probably more commonly now, uh, you can use debit cards. Now debit cards look a lot like credit cards physically, but they act different, which we'll talk about here in a bit. Um, I personally have both a checking and a savings account, um, like most adults out there. Uh, you, as a bank customer, uh, have transactions. You're either depositing money or you're withdrawing money. So let's first talk about deposits. Deposits are anytime you put money into an account. So examples, you empty your piggy bank and you bring the coins uh, into the bank. They're going to put that in as a deposit, whether that's to checking or savings. Um, maybe you get some birthday money or Christmas money. Um, you could go put that money into your bank as a form of deposit. You get a part-time job, or in my case, a full-time job. Um, every time you get paid, you deposit that money. Now, some places require you to have that account to put it into with, in the form of an automatic deposit, or some are still old school, kind of traditional, and give you a handwritten check. Neither are wrong, it's just whatever the business prefers. We'll talk more about that when we get into our payroll unit in the weeks to come. So it's of course important that you put money in, but a lot of times you are withdrawing money. It's really thought of as the opposite of a deposit or you're taking money out of your checking account. Examples would be anytime you write a check or use your debit card. Um, you could go uh, to an ATM and get money that way way. You could go into the bank or into the drive through and get money out that way. The key with withdrawals is you have to have enough deposits in that cover any withdrawals. So if I deposit $100 and I spend $120, we've got a problem. Um, you'd really want it reversed and quite honestly you'd want even more than 20 bucks sitting in there. So you have to have more money in deposits than you do withdrawals. You can transfer money from one account to the next. Um, my husband and I will do that a lot. Um, we'll just move money from checking into savings, savings into checking, 
Um, sometimes, you know, I've heard of people having a Christmas account where they have like a little savings account set aside just for Christmas, or maybe it's a college account or whatever the case may be. So you can move money. Um, you can do that through paper means, um, by telephone, or probably the most commonly used on what's called online banking, or of course banking on, on the internet. It is imperative, and I can't stress this enough, especially as people become new bank customers, you absolutely need to record all of your transactions. So from the personal side, if you think about whether you have a checkbook or your parents do when they open it up, likely there's checks on the bottom and there's what's called a check register on top. And it's important that you record all of your transactions. Um, you miss a three, $400 payment in there, it's gonna look like you have three or 400 more dollars than you really do. And you tend to get a little bit spend crazy. Um, with the digital world we live in, a lot of that is done online and you can see transactions real time. Like for example, if I swipe my card, meaning my debit card at Willie's, by the time I walk out to my vehicle, it's already gonna probably show up on my bank account. So it's still important to write things down and it's a good um, habit to get into. Businesses have a check register, but they also have what's called a cash book. And I'll teach you more about that as we get into our checkbook activity and as we get into payroll. It's just a little bit more of a paper trail. Um, I've seen, as I mentioned, online is probably the most sought off, sought out way to um, manage checks, but you've maybe seen your parents or if you work at a place like Lily's, um, people have what are called duplicates checks, where it's almost like a little carbon copy underneath. So they write the check, but then when they rip it out and give it to whoever they're paying, they're still like that kind of you know thin papery carbon copy there. They're great, but sometimes they fall out of your checkbook and then it's just like you didn't record the check. But recording transactions is so, so, so important. ACHs or automatic clearing houses by definition are an electronic system for transferring money between banks. So, you know, I write a check to my friend Lindsay. We bank at different banks in different cities. As I write a check to her, that money needs to come out of my account but go into her account and then there's that kind of ACH or what's called like a middleman that gets the money to where it needs to go. ACHs are also um, kind of what's the driving force when people have direct deposits at a place of work or like a customer payment. Like a lot of our loans are automated, our insurance is often automated, our mortgage payments are automated, which means we don't necessarily, um, you know, I'm speaking personally here, write checks to those people, excuse me, places, it's automatically withdrawn out of our account and it, it works through an ACH or an automated clearinghouse to make that happen. It's obviously um, less costly. You're not writing out a check that you might have to buy. You're not putting it in an envelope that you have to buy and you certainly aren't putting postage on it. So it reduces costs and obviously it's more efficient, it's faster, it's all tends to be electronic and online. You saw the many banking fees in yesterday's activity. Um, some banks have a monthly fee just to have the account. Uh, some banks will charge you if your account dips below a certain level. ATM fees are um, very widespread. Anytime you use an ATM machine, you know, you're putting your, your debit card into an ATM machine that's not sanctioned with your bank, you oftentimes will see a one, two, maybe even a five or six dollar fee with that. Um, very high tourist areas, like for example, something at US Bank or say um, Target Field, if you use one of their debit card or ATM machines, you're likely gonna see a larger fee just because there's a lot of people there. Um, sometimes they'll give you incentives to have online bill pay, or sometimes you may have to pay a processing fee to have that happen. You just wanna be mindful of those little one, two, three dollar charges add up quickly over the course of a month. Um, overdraft fees is simply, it's not simply, it's, it's a big deal. Um, if you write a check and you don't have enough money in your account, you would be assessed an overdraft fee from your bank, but likely you would be charged another fee um, from whoever you wrote your quote unquote bad check to. You have to really, really be careful of that. Um, we had this happen recently. Um, we had to pay to have a what's called a stop payment fee. We kept getting a bill in the mail that said we didn't, they hadn't received our 
check. We had wrote our check many months ago. We figure it was lost in the wind. Um, um, weather like what we're experiencing right now, our check literally probably vanished um, in the windy Minnesota terrain that we live in. So we actually had to pay to have that check stopped so that no one could write against our account. So that really is checking and um, savings accounts in general. I see that we already are at about a 10 minute lecture. Um, I think it would be a good stopping point. I could pick up on the life cycle of a check and the DNA of debit cards when I see you next, which I'm crossing my fingers for Thursday. We'll, we'll hopefully see each other and be back in school by then. Um, my plan is to review um, some of the things that you've been doing on these e-learning days, and then I think I'll pick up right where I left off with this lecture. I just want to give you adequate time to finish your um, 10 quiz questions. If you feel like you can't come up with 10, just email me tomorrow and I can guide you or give you some more resources to pull from. But I look forward to seeing you back in school soon, and I'll stop here.